Dun, 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 and welcome back, my friends, to the BJJ Brick Quick Podcast. My name is Byron. We're not wasting any time today. This is a quick podcast. Listen to this pause. That's about all the time we're going to waste. <laughs> we're talking about maps the last two episodes. Are you lost? Do you have something you're working on? I'm going to kind of take the topic of map and ex- you know, jump into that a little bit more. Sometimes I like, well, what should I talk about this this episode or this week? And I thought of having a jiu-jitsu map. And I thought about maps. Like, I bet I can make five episodes about a map cover the whole week. <laughs> Here we go, my friends. There's a town in New York called Aglo. It's a fake town, but it's real. Back in the day when people would make maps, the maps would be stolen basically the intellectual property of the map would get stolen and somebody would copy it and then resell it and so what people would do is make up a little thing on the map like it like the town of aglo and if i saw the map you were selling and it had the town of aglo on it which is not even real i would know you stole my map you didn't make that so it's called a copyright trap With map making. Look it up if you're interested. A-G-L-O-E is the town. It's a real town now. What happened? (laughs) I don't want to bring this back to jiu-jitsu. Hang tight. It's a real town. So people, uh, you know, they decided to put up a business and and some things in this area. Looked on a map and, oh, this is Aklo. Let's call this Aklo. And they went with it. After a while, this fake town became real. There's countless examples of this with names of streets and things like that as well. Let's put a street in here. What are we going to call this? Let's look on the, oh, the map says there should be this. They went with it. They became a real thing based on a copyright trap by a map maker, a cartographer. I think about this and in, in, in jiu-jitsu, like... There's so much information out there. And where's it all coming from? I train at Fox Fitness. And one thing that is, I'm impressed by is Jake Fox is the main, he's Fox Fitness, Jake Fox. Um, he seems to always know where he gets his information from. He'll say, I learned this from Andre. I learned this from James. I learned this from Dane or, you know, me or what. Like, he knows this. So when he, something about his brain that my brain doesn't do so well, <laughs> is when he learns something, he remembers who showed it to him. And and sure, like, we, we have all learned a lot of jujitsu. And as you learn and train, you'll learn from more sources than just, you know, a few. As you do seminars and get out there and travel or watch something on video, you pick up new things. And something about him, he always remembers where he got it. Me, I'm lucky to remember what it is. (laughs) I don't have the best catalog in my head. But it's important to Jake. And it's, it's nice as a student to hear where it came from. If he's saying, like, I do a lot of leg drags. He'll, anytime he's showing leg drag stuff, it seems like my name comes up a lot. So if the students are more interested in leg drags, they know to ask me. I do know where I learned my leg drags from. It's Tim Sled. He had a, had a video, and um, it was very helpful. And after I learned the basics of that, I went in and dived deeper, and I did a lot, and I did more learning and watching tournaments and that sort of thing, and I picked up more and more information on leg drags. But that's one example of something that I made more of a map for. I did leg drags for more than a year. We were talking about that yesterday. I did a certain guard passing for more than a year. I remember where it came from. Now, if I learned, a, like, a, like doing a Kimura grip and grabbing the hand instead of the wrist is an interesting concept. I don't usually do that. I don't usually think about it. I don't know where I learned that. I know Brian Freeman did it to me once, and I was impressed. He was a guy I interviewed. But when I knew that, I I thought I, when he did it, I'm like, I think I remember doing that or hearing about that. That's a good move. I've seen Jake do it as well. 
the map on that one's lost as far as the copyright trap. <laughs> so where'd your moves come from? One move I could think of that I know a lot about is the Kimura. I'm not the best practitioner of the Kimura by any stretch. I would say my Kimura is below my belt level. I do not have a black belt level Kimura. I don't think I have a purple belt level Kimura. I did an episode of BJJ Brick, not the quick version, but the full version of Kimura. Masahiku Kimura was his name. This episode is over two and a half hours long. It's episode 372. You could go download and listen to it today. It's absolutely free. It's just scroll down further on the, on the uh, podcast feed or find it on uh, YouTube or wherever you listen to this thing. <laughs> episode 327. Uh, it's called Kimura, More Than a Legend. And I, in that episode, I learned a lot about the person, Kimura. He got, as a kid, he, you know, he was attacked with knives. Um, he, you know, he, obviously he had the famous match you know, in Brazil against Helio Gracie, where he kimura him. Um, there's a lot of stuff in that match I break down in that episode later on Kamora goes on and has a crazy series with a guy named Ricky Dozan not the best of moves that kind of ends in a bit of a tragedy anyway I'm getting a little sidetracked on Kamora here but there's one deep dive you can learn about a technique I think I, I did my best on that episode to make a good map of that. To document the history of that technique. This, I'm sure, could be done for many other te- techniques. Someone could do that about rubber guard or daily heave guard or like the Dars choke. I interviewed the guy who, uh, you know, <laughs> back in the day I used to do a lot of interviews for the show. I interviewed the Dars. Joe D'Arcy is his name. He came up with the Dars Choker. He started doing it, popularized it. It went from there. Where do your moves come from? Are they ancient? Are there pictures of gladiators doing them? Are there pictures of wrestlers on cave walls from back in the day? Maybe so. If you've enjoyed the podcast, I appreciate the support. It means a ton. You get to go to Patreon. Support me there. There are not a ton of Patreon support. You're not going to go there and see that this is making a ton of money. <laughs> Each person who supports me uh, is very important, and I really appreciate you guys. Hope you have a great day today. Stay sweaty, my friend. <laughs>